Mr. Ernest Clayton Walker. You know, there's the stereotype of politician and, and, uh, and governor, of course. But uh, through the years, I have really gotten to know him. And uh, when he calls me his brother, um, it, it, it warms my heart because I, I look at him and he, he is my brother. Not because he's the governor, not because he's anything special. <laughs> but because he, he is one of the most humble human beings that I have ever met, ever. And I've met a lot of, uh, a lot of famous people and a lot of rich people and a lot of just people. And you, through meeting you know, millions of people, you, get, you, can, you can kind of feel someone when you're around them. And, uh, I've never seen Rick exalt himself in any kind of way. He is exactly the opposite. As a matter of fact, my bus pulled into Austin, Texas. We were playing the rodeo one year, and we had a sign out. Well, not then, but we since put a sign up outside the bus door that no shoes on the bus because it scratches up the marble floors. <laughs> <laughs> and I was in the shower, and I heard a knock on the door, and my driver, he was so strict about people not wearing their shoes on the bus because he has to make sure the bus stays in great shape. I heard the door open, and I thought, oh my goodness. He's making Rick take his boots off. So I ran <laughs> in my towel as fast as I could through the bus. And Rick had already taken his shoes off. And uh, I was so embarrassed. Um, but that's just the kind of guy he is. And just to show you how much I appreciate him, I had two bags last night when I stayed at his house, and one of them was really heavy, and I let him carry that one. <laughs> But when you examine, the, you know, I, I think it was, uh, maybe it was Socrates that said, you know, the, the unexamined life is worthless. I think Rick has, has examined his life and knows where he wants to be uh, in, this, in this world. And it's, it's not at the head of our state, but it's, it's as a Christian leader. And we don't, we don't have enough Christians in office, you know. I I don't think we'll have enough Christians in office until they're all Christians. <laughs> and you know, when I think about prayer, I think about the football games that I played in uh, all through junior high and high school. And praying for a football game was the most important part to me because I knew that my gift, my talent came from good Lord and then it didn't come from anybody else and that it wasn't of my own doing that he gives us all something and we just have to recognize it and find out what it is and that's what what I want my, my son my eight, eight month old son to grow up knowing is that there there is a God he did give him that gift and that when he plays football and walks on the field I want him to pray with his teammates like I did and have that right 
and that privilege. And we need people like Colt McCoy. I just want to tell you, Colt, that I, I still have pretty good arm buddies, and I know Mac Brown, so if you have any <laughs> issues, I'm, sure. I'm, I'm ready. But we need leaders like these men that are, that are sitting behind me. We need, we need people like Rick Perry, because that's what made this, this nation great, and that's what makes this the greatest state uh, in our union, is because we are good people.